has come from the lower parts of our county, Richland County. He has come by chariot, amen, coming as Elijah came in a chariot of fire to bring a word that was planted in his heart by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has come to bear good news for those of us who are hurting, good news for those of us who are financially in dire straits. And so we ask that you would open up your ears, your hearts, and even your minds to hear Reverend Donald Jackson, Senior Pastor of Epiphany Ecumenical Church, bring the word of God for the people of God in the house of God. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Thank you, sir. The church say amen. 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 Oh, what a beautiful worship service was that. That was something from God himself. Amen. Oh, praise God. On this Sunday of January 29th, we're going to be talking about the good news. Amen. We're going to be talking about those who are blessed, yes. you see. In the Beatitudes, those who followed Christ and his apostles, you see. These are the ones that came, you see. The one that was poor in spirit. The one that was mourning. The ones that were hungry. The one that was merciful. You know what I'm saying? Those who are pure in heart, you see. And the peacemakers, you see. Those were the blessed. Those were the ones who run after. Those were the ones that knew who he was, you see. They knew the salvation that he was going to bring, you see. But it was the good news because they waited on such a news, you see. They didn't worry about the, the conformity or the, 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 the religious acts in the, in the temples, you see. Uh, they all have their place, you see. But they didn't cater to, you know what I'm saying, the ones that Jesus came for. They didn't cater to the poor. They didn't cater to the mournful, you see. But only thing about it, you see, as Jesus spoke to the multitude, as he taught his disciples, he gave you the beginning. He gave you where you was coming from, you see. And Jesus said, come to me. Follow me, you see. And all that you want, all that you need, he will provide it, you see. But are we staying on the course? Are we waiting on Jesus? Are we watching for Jesus, you see? This is a time of preparation. You are accepted because you believe, you see. Now, let me explain to you. There are many who know, you see. There are many who can read, you see. They know. Being with Jesus is more than that, you see. You got to have more than knowledge. You know what I'm saying? You got to have faith. You have to have faith in what you believe in, you see. You know it, you see. You know that Jesus is the Son of God. You know that Jesus came for our salvation and redemption, you see. But until you walk in that faith of what you believe, you see, that's when you can re really receive Jesus as he really are, you see. That's when the, the, the manifestation of Jesus come to you, you see. That's when... You don't have to worry about those troubles. You don't have to worry about them, you see. It's your faith, yes. you see, or the lack of faith that keep you there, yes. you see. Because when you believe, you see, and just the idea of believing it and keeping it in your forehead, you see, you have started a chain reaction, you see. You start a reaction through your faith yes. that everything that comes in 
touch with you, you see. All those that come in touch with you, you see. Then your faith is activated, you see. Your faith is activated to a point of that which you believe will come to pass. And what we need to believe is Jesus. Jesus is the way. There is no other way, you see. They say, the Bible said that all will know Jesus, you see. All we have to confess, you see. So what we have to do, brothers and sisters, in our faith, we have to prepare, you see. We have to prepare ourselves with patience, you see. He don't take you through anything if he can't better it for you. That's the way of Jesus, you see. We, he said, rejoice in your trials and tribulations. He said, rejoice in them, you know what I'm saying? Because your faith, your belief that Jesus is going to make it better. And he's going to make it better. So we worry about how much we antagonize or suffering. Suffering comes with this package. Suffering comes with Jesus. But suffering comes because you want to be with the world and Jesus want to be with you. Jesus said, you come out of the world. Be in this world, but not of this world. Meaning, you see, you got to have more than the knowledge of knowing. You know what I'm saying? You have to have the knowledge of faith. And what you believe. Now, we just read through the Beatitudes, you see. And all of those who follow Jesus, you see, can recognize themselves or can see a point of themselves in the attitude, you see. Matter of fact, those who don't believe can find themselves in the Beatitudes, you see. But we, we have to possess ourselves, you know what I'm saying, and stay in the way of Jesus. So the Bible say, well, we say, who must be prepared? The Bible say the whole world must prepare themselves for Jesus coming in Mark 16, 15. Oh, praise God. They say, well, is it just going to be for the Jews? No, brothers and sisters. All men everywhere, as recorded in Acts 30 and 31, that we must prepare, you see. But why are we preparing? Why, why, why are we preparing, they say? We're preparing for Jesus coming. We're preparing to meet Jesus, you see. But people... Say, they're already ready, you see. Nobody don't want to die. Who want to die? No one wants to die. Elijah didn't taste death. You see, Enos didn't taste death. But the book says, the Bible says, the speaking word of God says that no flesh, no flesh will be in his presence. So what are we preparing? We're preparing our spirit. We got to prepare our spirit. We got to stay in touch with the word. We got to stay in prayer with Jesus. We got to strengthen our spirit so that we will not faint on that great and final day. Amen. Oh, praise God. You see, we are something like, are, are, we, are we like, the, oh, praise God. Let's say it like this. Are, 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 are we like the ten virgins? Hmm? Y'all remember the parable of the ten virgins? You see? Five prepared. Five did not. You see? See, this is the purpose of, of, of being prepared. This is the purpose of keeping God in your forehead. This is the purpose of strengthening your spirit so that you won't faint. You know what I'm saying? He gave it to us in a parable. And you see, five was wise. You see. Because they not know when he came. So they put extra oil. You see. Five were foolish. You know what I'm saying? They just assumed that they knew the day and the hour. Oh, praise God. 
See, this parable covers a lot of things. It's not only, you know what I'm saying, for the ten virgins, you see. It's not only because they wouldn't prepare. But if you're not prepared, you see, it also gives us a light on those who are not prepared, those who do not pray, those who not stay in the way and uh, uh, in the way of God and, and, and his son Jesus, those who do not believe in the two commandments, you know, the commandment, you know what I'm saying, to love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. And, and those who do not believe in, we should love our neighbor as ourselves, you see. Those who walking in that way, you see, and staying in constant prayer is preparing themselves. Those are the true believers. Those are the ones who know that they need to be right when God, when Jesus come again. Oh, praise the Lord. Those are the ones who believe, you understand, when he said, Son, this is my beloved son, and who I'm well pleased, hear he him. You see, those are the ones who following our Christ, our Redeemer, and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. Now, God has chosen a job for each and every one of us. You see, some are to speak to the people. Some are to bless the poor. Some are to, uh, are to do the works of Christ. You see, yet some are commanded to preach unto the people. You see what I'm saying? And what we are, we are to preach the good news, you understand, that Christ will come again. Christ will come for his people, you see. Because God, God ordained Christ, you know what I'm saying, that he would be the judger of the quick and the dead. They say, well, what is the day? <coughs> those who did not prepare themselves, those who did not build their spirit to the point of it's strong enough to be in the presence of God, you see. You can't worry about your flesh self. We know the flesh is sinful. The ways of sin is death. So sin ain't going to be in paradise. Sin ain't going to be with Jesus, you see. But those who prepare themselves, you see, that essence that he blew into the first man, Adam, you see, his spirit, and the spirit of all of us who have chosen Christ as our Lord and Savior, all of us who believe in God, you see, and all of us who walk in the way of God, then he prepared a place for us. He prepared a place for us. All of us got a spirit, but those who did not prepare themselves, you see, will be confused, you see. Those who not prepare themselves, with those with the gnashing of the teeth, you know what I'm saying? Those who not prepare themselves, will those be the ones in turmoil, you see. This ain't coming in the flesh. This is in the spirit by and by. So prepare ourselves. We must be prepared. You know what I'm saying? But when, when should we start being prepared? You know what I'm saying? Not because we, not because we're walking in the ways of this world, but because we choose Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe that he died for our sin. We believe. You know what I'm saying? In the resurrection. We believe that we will bring with him in his kingdom. That is for those who have prepared themselves. That is for those who are really walking in the way of Christ. But old brothers and sisters, I, I must say this. I am compelled and I to, to, to say this. We ain't going to be good all the time. You see. We ain't going to be good toward what society or what people think. We should be good. You see. Because what people think is good, that is God 
weakest point. He said his weakest point is stronger than any point that, you know what I'm saying, the human flesh can, can bring to the table. So we must be prepared, you see, and watch. And when we say watch, you know what I'm saying, we're not saying to look. But we're saying to surrender in our heart that Jesus is Lord. To keep in our forehead that Jesus is Lord. To read his word and stay in his word that Jesus is Lord, you see. And we, and if we should fail at any step that we may, you know what I'm saying? We know. We know as Christians, you know what I'm saying, we repent to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We bring it before the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And ask him to forgive us and to take that away from us. You see? See, that's a relationship. You know what I'm saying? After you're preparing yourself with God. That's the relationship. You see? So, in this Beatitudes, in this, as Matthew called it, as, 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 as Matthew recorded it, you see, as Matthew recorded it, that these are the things that is blessed by the Lord. These are the things, when you come and lay them down before the Lord, these are the things, you understand, that he will, he will uplift. He will uplift those things, you see. Those who are poor in spirit. Those who are poor in spirit. You know what I'm saying? He will give you a spirit so mighty. He will give you a spirit so great. You know what I'm saying? That it'll attract all those who believe as you believe. Oh, praise God. So he satisfied all these things. And as you as it recorded in the book, you see, those who came out to see Jesus, those who came out to hear Jesus, those who came out to be blessed by Jesus, those who came out to be healed by Jesus, you see, those are the ones in Matthew 5, 3, and 11. That will be blessed. They will be blessed. You know what I'm saying? And we should be mindful. We have to be mindful. You see. The book of Matthew 24, 48 through 51. And let me read that to you. It says, but and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. And shall began to smite his fellow servant and eat and drink with the drunkards. The liar, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he look up not for him. And in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Oh, praise God. Now, brother and sister, I'm going to be truthful with you. I ain't self-righteous. I fall. I fall into the hypocrite situations. But I, I pray. I pray. I stay with the Lord because I recognize. See, once your eyes open and you recognize what that you do that is not pleasing to the Lord, then you got to prostrate. You got to get on your knees and you got to call on it. You know what I'm saying? And confess your sins. You see. And, and, and this will keep you out of that place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. They will keep you out of that place of turmoil, you see. Stay in the word. Stay in contact with God, you see. As each day go by. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. As it, it, and each day go by, do your mind reflect? You're saying, on something 
that may not have been godly. Okay. Do you ignore it? See, that's the spirit of truth talking to you then. You see. Do you ignore it? Or do you confess to God? God to Jesus. Jesus, I may not. That I, I, I don't think that was right, Jesus. And if you could just forgive me, you see. That's acknowledging Christ, you see. That, that who is the forgiver of sins? Who is the forgiver of sins? Or do we turn our backs, go on as it is? No, we got to listen to our heart. For God will be the judge of the quick and the dead. We must be prepared. Preparation is the key. And only the preparation that God and Jesus asked for is to stay in his word. If you can abide, and I strongly, strongly lean toward that second commandment. If you can love that neighbor as thyself. Because we don't build a world that is so unrighteous. We don't build a world, you know what I'm saying, that actually evolves around not loving your neighbor. You see, we have built a world like that. You see, and there are bad consequences for such an improper such an improper preparation you see it will be destroyed but it's good news oh praise God it's good news you see but all of those in Revelation said all of those on his second coming will spring up and meet him in the sky oh praise God all those but what about those who have been dead what about all those whose, whose flesh has rotted away? You see, see that's as far as we can see. You see. But God, he ain't going to be a judge of the flesh. You see, because no flesh will be able to stand his presence. So we have to prepare ourselves, brothers and sisters. We have to prepare ourselves in our spirit. We have to grow with him. We have to stay in the way of Jesus Christ. It's so good for the Apostle Matthew to record it. Because it's which we can find ourselves. In which, you know what I'm saying, we know that Jesus is with us. In which we know God is with us. But that ain't all, brothers and sisters, because we recognize. We got to live it. We got to walk it. We got to talk it. You see? And some things you can't worry about what man says. Because man in his strongest of strength can't compare with the weakness of God's strength. Sometimes we don't know what we're going through or why we're going through it. Brothers and sisters, the good news is put Jesus first. Put Jesus first and he'll take you through it. Put Jesus first and he'll sh show you the way. I stumble and fall, but oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that I can get back up. See, sometimes in our life, we don't think we're worthy of heaven. So we we fall in the condemnation of the world. Brothers and sisters, the Beatitudes is one thing to give you all the strength that you need to know that Jesus is for you, with you, and never against and never is against you. Take Jesus everywhere in your thoughts, in your plans, even in the breath that you take.
And with Jesus, you can humble yourself before the Lord, and surely he will direct your path. So, brothers and sisters, let us continue this study. Let us continuously pray. Let us continuously speak the good news, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine.